While training for the ASCA3 manual drive train and axles, I ran into three topics that seemed difficult at first. Number one is disassembling a manual transmission. I've disassembled some automatic transmissions such as GM's 4L60E and Ford's 5R55E. Automatic transmissions have a valve body and the valve body is home to all the tiny pieces and sometimes it seems like there's a million of them. A typical manual transmission doesn't have a valve body. So the disassembly is much quicker, especially if you're working on a manual transaxle. For those, you're just basically opening up the case and all the components are right there. So it makes inspection and replacing a component much easier. I'd rather build or I'd rather rebuild a manual than an automatic. So at first, disassembling a manual transmission seems as difficult as disassembling an automatic, but you'll see that's not the case. So, which of the following components is not used with the manual transmission? Is it a flywheel, a clutch, a pressure plate, or a flex plate? Which shift is the idly gear active in. Number two is checking the pinion gear to ring gear tooth contact pattern. Now we're moving on to the rear axle of a rear wheel drive vehicle. My service experience with the rear axle was limited to changing gear oil and changing axle bearings and seals. So when it came to checking the tooth contact pattern, I thought you would need a whole bunch of specialized tools and to remove a bunch of components but that's not the case. You simply add marking compound to a few of the ring gear's teeth, move the ring gear back and forth until you get a definite pattern or a definite contact pattern, and that's it. It's as easy as that. The only difficult thing here is dealing with that gear oil smell. You know what I'm talking about. And interpreting the results is pretty easy too. So how good are you? and interpreting the results. If the contact pattern is towards the heel of the ring gear, what needs to happen to gear backlash? If the contact pattern is towards the toe of the ring gear, what needs to happen to gear backlash? Number three is checking pinion bearing preload. This one is still a big mystery to some of my peers. Some of them started learning about the rear axle, but when we got to stuff like this, they were like, nope, rear axle work is not for me. And they bolted out of the room. Other technicians don't like working with that collapsible spacer. Some of those spacers require at least 300 foot pounds of torque before they crush. Just like with number two, I thought checking pinion bearing preload will require a bunch of specialized tools and to remove a bunch of components. Now that second part, removing a bunch of components is true, but it's not that bad. You just remove the drive shaft, the brake calipers or drums, and you get your beam style torque wrench and measure turning effort. Simple as that. Now, setting pinion depth, that's a whole different story. <laughs> so, which do you set first, pinion bearing preload or pinion deft? What can happen if the pinion bearing preload is below specifications? And that's it. The A3 is one of the more difficult tests to pass. I would say it's due to a lack of experience. Not many people are working on rear axles and not many people are working on manual transmissions. Heck. A lot of technicians don't even know how to drive a manual transmission, let alone work on one. This test will require you to put in the hours. And it has questions on the two aforementioned topics, manual transmissions and axles. Sprinkle in some transfer case questions. Sprinkle in some all-wheel drive questions. And you have a recipe for a very difficult test. But if you have a passion for automotive, if you have a passion for learning, it should be a fun ride. Have a good day.